Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman, and being joined today by my man, Robert Anderson. What's going on, people? Folks, we are here with a review of the G1 Supercard show that literally just went off the air. Jesus De Leon, I see you in there, brother. Connor, what is happening, my man? I see you guys in there. Do me a favor, guys. If people are coming in, you tell them. Make sure they like this video. Comment down below. It helps people see the video more, and EPW is trying to grow this WrestleMania weekend. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to get into it. Rob, let them see the merch, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we working. We working out here. I don't, know how, out he, here. I don't know how he got his stuff before me. T Public, we got some problems, bro. <laughs> I get it in. All right, that's EPF and W. But make sure you guys check out the merch. It's gonna be down in the description box below. Uh, I put out a podcast today on Brainbuster Radio in the NXT Takeover review from YouTube yesterday. We're doing tremendous things. Shout out to the Brainbuster Radio crew. You guys are tremendous. We've been talking all day about pro wrestling. Let's get into this G1 Supercard. Now, this show is historic because this is the first time in years that someone else besides the WWE had Madison Square Garden. What a historic moment for the people in the G1. Uh, Rob, what do you think of that? Give some thoughts. Well, I was just happy because, as we already know, it almost didn't happen. Uh, the Evil Empire over there. The E? The E, as we'll call them. They were, they were, they were trying to get busy behind, behind closed doors. <laughs> Yeah, they were definitely trying to hate on it, but now we know that Triple A is going to be there in September. So if you guys are interested in going to an event at Madison Square Garden, one of epic proportions, you're definitely going to want to go there to check out Triple A. Uh, lots of people are part of that to get it going on. But enough about that. Let's get into this G1 show because we have a lot of wrestling to talk about in the next few days. It's been crazy. If you guys want to know, my sleep schedule is all jacked up, but it's all <laughs> worth it for you guys. Who needs sleep, man? It's WrestleMania season. I'll sleep when I die. But let's get into this, guys. So the first match, the Honor Rumble. And I believe they said the winner will get an ROH title shot afterwards. Which means the winner actually made sense. I know we're not happy with that, but... Peace. I'm no. definitely not happy hey. with that. <laughs> okay, so we get into the Honor Rumble right now, guys. The Honor Rumble had started off with Kenny King and Minro Suzuki. Absolute beast. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about a lot of the stuff on here. I walked in towards the end of this. Actually, when, when I walked in, it was right when uh, our surprise entrant came out. The Great Muda. Great Muda was in this. Um, I, I put down some names I thought would be interesting for people to see. Um... Will Farage came back at one point during this. We saw PJ Black. Um, he's a part of Ring of Honor now, so very cool to see him. Jushin Thunder Liger was in this. Love Liger, and they he definitely got the best reaction out of everybody to be in this. Eh, well, maybe. Him and him and Muda were tied, man. I never thought we were going to see Muda. Yano comes out, gives his spot to Colt Cabana. Then Yano, Yano. <laughs> Yano ends up running in and still costing Colt the match. Uh, good stuff. Haku was in this. King Haku. You don't mess with the boy Haku. If he puts you in that Tongan death grip, it's over. Uh, hey, Zeus, hang on to that question, my man. We will answer that when we get a little bit closer to that match. Keep it, keep it, though. I like the question. So, overall in this match, it ends up coming down to the two guys in the kingdom. Uh, T uh, TKO Ryan and uh, Vinny Masala. <laughs> Thank you. And Great Muda and Jushin Liger. They do this whole face-off, they square up, and then it comes down to Muda and Liger. Dude, the inner fan in me, if you don't know... This kid was going crazy, I man. freaking <laughs> love Great Muda and Jushin Liger. Like, when I get the video games, I always look for a Muda call and a Jushin Thunder Liger call every year. Like, it doesn't matter. Dude, unbelievable shocker when you think that it's over... And we're going to get a good winner out of all this. We end up seeing Kenny King come from wherever he came from. The abyss of hell around that ringside I'm assuming area. assuming Suzuki just beat the hell out of him and left him laying outside. Yeah, well, I didn't. I forgot all about Kenny King. He comes in, dumps out Liger. Kenny King is the winner and is getting a future Ring of Honor title shot. What up, Goober? What up, Nelson? 
yes what is going on my people thank you guys so much for joining don't forget to click that like button uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure you join the conversation I want to hear what you guys think of this um, Jesus De Leon says some of the ROA matches were ass we're going to get into that we'll get into sir. that hey DP what is happening my man I'm so glad you are in here again DP says one of the greatest wrestling shows I've ever witnessed ooh I, I can't be mad at him <laughs> Goober, hold on to that. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. So, we get to the main card. We start off strong. We have the ROH Television Champion versus the Never Open Way Champion. We have Jeff Cobb versus Will Ospreay. Dude, I couldn't even take notes during this match. That's going to be a constant problem throughout this. Like, There's no way that I could take notes to keep up with some of the moves we are seeing in these matches. So I can't give you the play-by-play -play breakdown like I did for NXT TakeOver. And even then, that was hard because I wasn't taking full notes. Hey, what's going on? What is this? King Trowick 1993? Good to see you. First time I've ever seen you in here, man. So I appreciate you coming in here. If you like the video... Click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you, brother. So let's talk about this Jeff Cobb, Will Ospreay match. Uh, same for you, Chad. Leave your thoughts on this, too. Rob, amazing moves we see in here. Um, amazing. What, what did you think of any of the stuff in here? Well, as you know, lately, uh, Will Ospreay's been kind of toning his style down. We consider more serious for the heavyweight contention. This man, this dude is inhuman. That's all I got to say. <laughs> He's been uh, bulking up. I think he's getting ready for the heavyweight division, in my mm -hmm. opinion. But, so, we see some amazing moves in here. The usual. Jeff Cobb doing backflips. We've got Will Ospreay doing his usual stuff. Uh, great, great. Uh, the spot of the match, to me, came from that Oz cutter he went for. He goes for it. He gets caught. Jeff Cobb throws him into the turnbuckle. He lands on the ropes, and then he jumps back off and then hits the cutter on him. Insane. Insane. We end up getting to a spot where both guys are on the top rope, uh, jockeying for position, and eventually, Jeff Cobb gets the best of Will Ospreay. Tour of the islands off, off the, the top ro rope. Dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, and then not only that, he doesn't pen him. He picks him up and does another one. One, two, three. Jeff Cobb is the never open weight and Ring of Honor TV champion. Good God almighty, Jeff Cobb is that boy. I've been telling well you guys deserved. all year. Well deserved. What up, D? A.D. Yo, yo, yo. What's good? <laughs> um, Yeah, dude, I have to give this a grade of an A-. minus. It was an excellent match. I thought it was very fun. If you are someone who likes Ring of Honor or New Japan, you have to know the name Jeff Cobb, and you have to know the name Will Ospreay. I'm telling you. These guys are money, and you're going to hear their names more often in the future. Trust. Let's get to the next match. Hold on, before we get there, Jesus has a question. What? Can he win a title shot? Yes, he did for the ROH World Heavyweight Championship. Yes, Allegedly. Sir. We'll see what, that, what happens with that on TV, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, this is going to be a little off topic. Derek Shelton, uh, make sure you check your phone. I sent you a text message a couple days ago, good sir. <laughs> WrestleMania <laughs> tomorrow, you know? Let me know. Look at this beard, man. I got a shade. Yeah, no. Yes. Let me know, though, D. <laughs> Dalton Castle versus Roosh is the next match. You call this a match? No. There's no grade for this. And I'm going to update the grades and stuff afterwards in the comment section. Dalton Castle versus Roosh dominated. There's nothing else to be said. Roosh came in, beat Dalton Castle's ass. Peacock that. <laughs> and afterwards, Rouge penned him. It was over, like, in the blink of an eye. One, two, three. There's no grade for this. This gets an N.A. It's a dud. But afterwards, Dalton Castle's in shock. And shout out to Cameron, because I know he's going to care about this. Dalton, Not the boys. Dalton Castle turned on the boys. Not the boys. Goober is crying in there for the boys. I hear you, man. They were great. I've met them before, so they were totally cool. But... Very sad to hear what happened, man. Dalton Castle has turned on the boys, and and he was heartbroken when he was doing it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're good guys though, man. Like they've been down with Dalton since day one, and now he's kicked their ass to the curb too. I mean, would you consider this a heel turn though, or as an awakening for Dalton Castle? I think it's a heel turn. Oh, I think he man. went the route of babyface without going babyface. Yeah, so. 
it is what it is at this point, man. So we'll see what happens with Dalton Hassel. Dalton, excuse me, Castle. He hassled those boys. That's what he did. Dalton Hassel. <laughs> Hassle those boys. <laughs> um, he took them out. Jesus says, dream over Castle. Ooh. I I'd agree. like to see that match. I, I would, too. And I agree. Uh, <laughs> he, he tried to do the dreams entrance with the peacock thing, too. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. But it wasn't working like that. Let's get to the next segment. We see Juice Robinson is attacked backstage by some rando. I don't know what the hell that was or what happened throughout. Yeah, who was that running away? I don't know. That was never really explained. So, I don't know. That was bullcrap. <laughs> I didn't like that. <laughs> so, it, it'll get explained later on. Trust me. So, next, we get the Women's of Honor title match. The Gatekeeper, Kelly Klein versus um, Mayu. Mayu I- Iwatane. There we go. Try to throw Rob off here for a second. Make sure you keep him on his toes. I'm usually good with these pronunciations, man. I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z and all that. <laughs> so Kelly Klein comes out, and she sends Camp Klein to the back instantly from the start of the entrance. Um, very weird to see that. Very strange. <laughs> so Hold on, poor Derek. Damn, not the boys, no. <laughs> uh, Nelson, we're talking about the G1 Supercard, ROH and New Japan's co Branded show at Madison Square Garden. Yes, yes. See the uh, symbols. Just type in G1 Supercard. I'm sure you'll see a bunch of highlights. And we're going to talk about everything that happened here. And we're even going to bring up some stuff from other shows. Trust. Nelson, I'll put you on. Hold on. <laughs> so, Women of Honor title match. This was a basic match, really. Uh, I didn't see anything too flashy. I mean, Mayu jumped off the top rope to the floor. There were some good dives. It never little... really got going, though, in my opinion. Dude, what's up with the Women of Honor division? They're missing something. I don't know what it is, but they might they might have found something, but we'll get there. I, so, it ends with Kelly Klein hitting the K-Power on Mayu. One, two, three. She had two of them, right? Yes. She had two throughout the match. But I give it a grade of a C. It was an average match at best. It was it was different, but it didn't really work for me. So afterwards, uh, who was on commentary? Mandy. Mandy Leone. Mandy Leone's there. But after this match, we see the beautiful people. Can I? Hey, hey, they, they are the allure now. <laughs> Whatever. Angelina Love and Velvet Sky come out. So if you guys are fans of TNA, I'm sure you know those names. They were doing their thing, grinding on the ropes, humping them, whatever you want to call it. They had the boys getting wet out in the crowd. Very divish. Yeah. Uh, I was very surprised to see them back. And Mandy uh, leaves the broadcast team, gets in the ring, and ends up joining them. They put the beat down on Klein. Yeah, she smacked her in the back of the head with her heel. <laughs> yeah, she got she got mollywopped pretty good there. Yeah. And afterwards, she's sitting there, and she's kind of laid up against them. And she could have fought back a lot more than she did. They pull out lipstick, and they put this, like, A on her head. It's like Looks... an anarchy symbol, but... Yeah. Mandy is hot. I hope she joins AEW. Nah, she can stay where she's at, but... Yeah, take it easy with that, Jesus. Come on now. I, I agree with your first point. <laughs> <laughs> so, afterwards, that's when we find out their new name is the Allure, and the A has the anarchy symbol around it. So, we have a new faction in the Women of Honor division. Should make things a little bit more interesting. I hope so. They, they, need, they need a shot in the arm bad. Yeah. Also, after this... Kelly Klein got up and no sold that beat down. Oh, I get man. you. I get you standing tall, but ugh. all right. Let's. I think this is right when stuff started getting a little haywire here. So we'll talk about Mega Ran coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so Mega Ran comes out and he did another like awkward rap. Like, didn't they learn from the seventeenth anniversary that this isn't like the thing that the crowd wants to see? Is the wrong crowd for this. I mean, I like Mega Ran too, but this was this this wasn't it. Yeah. So Mega Ran comes out. I'm begging for Bully Ray to come out. Bully Ray shows up. He called it too right before Bully Ray even came out. He said, "Bring Bully out." <laughs> yeah. Bully Ray comes out. He gets in his face. There's a little bit of a shoving match. They're talking crap back and forth. Bully whips him with the chain around <laughs> his neck, dude. That looked like that shit hurt. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. I was like, damn, that sucked, bro. Uh, Mega Ran got what he deserved. <laughs> Peace. I'm sorry. Like, I, I like Mega Ran, but that, that wasn't it. So that happens. New York City Street Fight. We know that it was supposed to be Juice Robinson. He's been taken out backstage, as we said earlier. So who comes out to take his spot? Flip Gordon. At least, and, it wasn't Tommy Dreamer, like we said on our previous <laughs> show on the podcast. Shout out to Brian Williams, nah, too. I love Flip Gordon, but he already proved his point. Why, did he, why, why was he back in this? 
So Flip Gordon and Bully Ray start off the match until Silas Young and Shane Taylor come out there to join up with Bully Ray to beat down on Flip. And... Oh, you can show that. That's fine. King T. Raw. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he said New Japan had better matches on the card than Ring of Honor. That's 100% true, man. Oh, yes. They carried this show. King, I 100% agree with you, brother. We'll, we'll get to that at the end. Yes. So... Silas Young and Shane Taylor come out. They're helping Bully Ray beat up Flip Gordon. Then we see Lifeblood's music hit. And Juice Robinson and Mark Haskins come out. Um, they do a lot of the usual spots. This turns into like a six-man street fight match. Uh, there's weapons, all types of manner of shits being used. They're out there going at it. And we see the kendo stick shots to Flip Gordon. I oh have to talk God. about this. Dude, we got a Tommy Dreamer spot as bad as we didn't want Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> he gave each guy a kendo stick. Well, he didn't give it to them. They had it. and He, he called them out. Basically called them like, uh, you bitches think you can take me? <laughs> and he got hit in give the back. Give me your best shot. Dude, there were marks all across Flip Gordon's back. When you say you want to be a professional wrestler, that is not what you want to have getting all marked up from that. Um, really cool. Rob, go to the finish for me for this. All right. Here we go. I, I just stopped at the kendo stick shots right here. All right. So after they get their, their shots in on Flip, um, who was it? Juice Robinson and Mark Haskin run down with their six, their uh, kendo sticks. They have like a little lightsaber battle between the six of them. Um, they take out Shane Taylor. They take out <laughs> Goober Cringe from those shots. Man. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that, those were those were bad, but he took them like a champ. That one from T Shane Taylor, though, that was pretty beast. So they take out Taylor, they take out Silas Young, three on one against Bully. They get him down, they get him up, set up for that uh the wise out spot ah. <laughs> <laughs> on the top rope. Mark <laughs> Mark Haskins hits hits him with the what's up. I, what do they even call it? Diving headbutt to the nuts. Well, yeah. <laughs> Bully Ray, all the whole match. Every time he got hit down, down the nuts. My bull! <laughs> my fucking bulls! <laughs> um, so they hit him with that. Flip Gordon hits him with a, what was it, a 450? I think it was a 450. Hit him with a 450. All three of them pin Bully Ray. They get the pin. Um, Life Blood with Flip Gordon gets the victory. Hey, eh. GG, C-plus match. It picked up at the end, but this was... It was what it was. It was a street fight, hardcore esque style match. I don't know. I feel like they kind of lost control though. Yeah, I give it a C plus. I didn't think it was bad. Nothing horrible on it. It was watchable. Yeah. Let's get to the next match. Um. Uh. Do we do we want to talk about the Hitman now or after this one? Eh, might as well get it out the way. Let's talk about. So, dude, during this time, we find out that Brett the Hitman Hart has been attacked at the WWE Hall of Fame show. Who? in the hell was the asshole who went in and attacked a wrestler how did he get that close is my first question and second how is he doing because if you watch the video he like tackles brett to the ground he rolls on uh natalia so many wrestlers from the crowd hit the ring travis brown of ufc fame got in the ring they beat the hell out of this guy he caught some hands i heard from uh davy boy smith jr davy boy uh dash wilder <laughs> dash wilder slumped him <laughs> yo Shout out, to, the man. shout out to the revival. Hashtag FTR, dude. Yeah, they, uh, he said they cut away so fast on that. We didn't man, even Twitter. watch this. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, buddy. Twitter blew up from all of this. So I want to say I wish Bret Hart nothing but the best. I know you put up a meme in the group <laughs> that, hey, life comes at you fast, man. <laughs> dude, Bret, this guy. Bret Hart was okay. You know what I yeah, mean? The, the attacker wasn't, though. Yeah, no, he, he got was, he got he caught all the hands. He got jawed, but <laughs> he's getting jawed. He was getting stomped. And you know what's the sad part, guys? This isn't even gonna that, be the last. Renee time. Young rushed over there. This isn't even gonna be the last time we hear about someone jumping the barricade for the night. Stay tuned. Stay with me for a little bit more. Let's get to the I. Hey, Zeus says it was Seth's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So let's get to the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title. We have Ishimori, who's the champion. Versus Dragon Lee versus Bandito. I am so happy I called this one. <laughs> you are you are 100%, dude. On the podcast, if you listen to the preview, uh, all the links will be down below for that. We're on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, wherever you guys listen to your podcast. Type in everything pro wrestling. Give us a listen. 
So during this match, we called it that it was going to be a fast-paced, crazy match. Like there's no breathing, no rest stops in between. And that's exactly what we got with this match. Once again, I can't write down everything that happened in here because it was flipping crazy. A couple spots that I did get, or actually the one main one that I want to talk about, is the double flip fall away slam. Dude, he had, so Bandito fucking had <laughs> Dragon Lee and Ishimori grabbed them both and did a backflip. It looked like it sucked for them who took it, but dude, what? that Man, was, the margin for error for that spot was paper thin. You saw right at the last moment Bandito hit that last turn to get the right spot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shout out to these guys, man. <laughs> Shout out to you for calling this, dude, because at, we all had Ishimori retaining on the uh, podcast for the preview for this. Go ahead. Call it out for Dragon League. All man. right. So Dragon League gets the victory. What did he hit him with? The, um, the hell is it? He uh, did the flip. I'm trying, the to think of the, I'm trying to think of the name of it. <laughs> Whatever. Dragon League's finisher. He, he hits the oh. suplex into the power bomb, yeah. the sit out power bomb. <laughs> All right, so Dragon League gets the victory. The reason why I picked him to win, he's the one that broke, um, what's his name, Hiromu Takahashi's neck last year and took his belt or made him um, relinquish the belt. <laughs> Takahashi may be cleared soon, I think. This is a built in story right here to get that belt back on him. Yeah, and he could just take it in the CMLL and then come back to New Japan as he needs to. I mean, he doesn't even have to get the belt back on him, but there's a feud right there. That's one that people want to see. And I miss Daryl. And, and Goober says this match was fun. Hashtag Daryl, man. Daryl's my guy. I mean, you got to bring Daryl back with a neck brace or something, man. <laughs> Hashtag Takahashi, man. Uh, love the dude. I can't wait to see that matchup, though. They have to redo that. Um, awesome. Awesome to see him in here. Guys, whoever's joining, thank you so much. Make sure you're talking in the live chat. I want to hear what you thought of this show. And we just talked about Brett the Hitman Hart in the Hall of Fame. And now we're about to get into... Oh, I'm sorry. And I gave this a grade of a B, if anybody cares to know. I had B, B plus, but... It is what it is. We're close. Similar. Yeah. Pluses and minuses. Four Corners Tag Match. Title versus title. We have the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champs <laughs> and the IWGP Tag Champs. And here's where we were talking about some other stuff. Hashtag Daryl the Cat is going off in the chat right now. <laughs> Love it, guys. Um, so we have the Gorillas of Destiny. Hashtag G-O-D. They are the IWGP Tag Team Champions. And they are going up against Evil and Sonata. The ROH Tag Team Champions, Villain Enterprises, which is PCO and Brody King <laughs> and the Briscoes. PCO's entrance was really dope, first and foremost. The electric chair with him in it and it's like, the shocking. It's like his Twitter handle says, PCO is not human. Bro. All right. So I don't have to say anything else about this match. This match was just kind of a clustery, usual four corners match. I do want to say one thing. I feel like even and Sonata were kind of protected in this. They didn't really take too many big bumps, and they were kind of left out of the decision. Why do you think that was? Because they're destined for greater things. Especially Sonata. Definitely Sonata. So, and unfortunately, that's who I picked to win this. They didn't win, just so you guys know. Dude, dope spot. We have to talk about this one spot in this match. Whew. PCO getting his ass powerbombed to the floor. Dude, I thought there was a table, a bunch of people out there that grabbed him. No. The Briscoes power... Was it the Briscoes who did it? No, no it was, it was, it was G.O.D. Because that I remember what they were saying after. I want to know how that, how that came across in the ROH stream because you know, they don't play that whole language barrier thing. New Japan don't care. Oh, well, well I'll let you repeat what they said after. They pick him up for a double power bomb. Like, Rob's got him on one side, I got him on the other. They just chuck just, him to the floor. Not even slay, they just threw his ass. Yeah, dude, all you hear is a... He like smack. He he's laid out on the ground. And we see Tama Tonga Tonga Lawa up on the curtains. Fuck you, motherfucker. Suck my motherfucking dick. <laughs> it was losing it. We were watching on the New Japan side, so it was crazy to see all that, dude. Like unbelievable. So afterwards, PCO sits up. He sits up. He gets his whole flex thing going, and he drops back down because you ain't selling that. One. <laughs> you ain't no selling that. One. Hell yeah, I know that sucks. Shout out to PCO too, man. The dude came into the garden in 1994 at WrestleMania 10 as a tag team champion. He is going into the garden in 2019. Think of all the time in between 25 that. 25 years. 25 years, and the man went in as the tag team champions tonight. Shout out to PCO. Career man. resurgence, man. PCO is not human, bro. Love that guy. Not effing human. So afterwards, the G.O.D. get the win with the superpower bomb on Brody King. One, two, three. The G.O.D. now have 
both sets of tag team titles for Ring of Honor and the IWGP tag team titles. And I'm looking forward to seeing G.O.D. over at ROH a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be good to see that. I see some PCO chants happening. Shout out to Goober. Uh, he, he earned every one of those chants, man. I, I was even doing it. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's the man. Robert called this one, too. You predicted that the Gorillas of Destiny would win. And why did I pick them? <laughs> because of the Bullet Club block party tomorrow. And now we get to what everybody wants to wait know. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. We got to talk about Yano. No, this, and was, the after this, was after. this was after. Well, Yano, this, so two things happen simultaneously. Yano comes out, and he has stolen the IWGP tag team titles. Why? I don't know. I, I Yano, I want Freaking him to Yano. Get, I want him to get his ass whooped so dude, bad. Thomas 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 hunting this dude for the longest. <laughs> the ass whooping must happen, New Japan fans. Please let it happen. Tama Tonga must beat Yano's ass. But I forget all that now. Let's talk about this Enzo and Big Cass bullshit. And I right. know the live chat has something to say about this. As soon as the bell rang and my cousin Donnie's in the room, but he don't want to be on camera. But he saw it right away. He saw the hair. I was like, yo, was that Enzo Amore? And he saw somebody getting the shit kicked out of him. Shout out to Donnie, who's back here being camera shy. But we still love you. That's right. So, anyway. Matter of fact, get your ass over here. Come on in. Real quick. Come on in. There's not a lot of people watching. This is Don Donnie, show off the shirt, man. L.I.J., baby. I like it. It wasn't a good night for them tonight, though. It was not. But, dude, they end up getting in here. Enzo and Cass started throwing hands with the Briscoes. Man. Enzo and Mark Briscoe got it in. If you guys can see the raw footage on Twitter, they were. it looked like those hands were real, man. Man, Enzo got the better of Mark. That's all I got to say. He ain't one with it. <laughs> Yo, Bully Ray came out Boxing and man. chucked Enzo into the barrier. Um, at the end of the day, a lot of people were asking, was this a work? Um, do you remember the account that said it was? I'm going to pull it up uh, on Twitter. I forgot what it was, but personally, I think this was like, it could have been a work <laughs> because there's a video online where it shows uh, Enzo and Cass separated from uh, the Briscoes, um, Bully, someone else too, but there's like four on two. And if this wasn't a work, you have one security guard between them two. Who's not rushing? <laughs> so PR Nightmare's asking if Enzo and Cass are back somewhere. We'll find out soon, I think. Voices of Wrestling, right here on Twitter. I looked it up. I even retweeted it because they're the original closer source. The <laughs> I, here, you guys can see if it's a little bit closer if you guys want to read it. But just got work, 100% of work. So they have claimed that it, I guess they're working for Ring of Honor, I assume? I don't know, man. But Enzo and Big Cass are part of it. A lot of people were not happy people about this. People are pissed, man. They were shitting on him. What'd you think about it, Donnie? <laughs> I, I I think I don't think it was a work, man. You don't think it was a work at uh, all, still? Yo, just the way they were just beating down on Enzo at first. Grab yeah, that, that chair. Grab like that real. chair and get in the middle here. <laughs> you can get some thoughts too. I'm tired of this, damn it. This is my show. <laughs> all right, make it happen. But th this thing, I think it makes things a little bit interesting. Enzo Mori recently did that shoot interview. Big Cass hasn't really been mentioned too much, but with Enzo's resurgence, I feel like people are wondering where has he been. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just going to take it as a we'll see right now yeah. as far as that goes. So overall, great for that tag match. B minus. I thought it was what it was, but still went off well, and Gorillas of Destiny won, and I love those guys. So. I enjoyed it, man. <laughs> don't worry. Gorilla Tactics is time for Warfield. We came to battle. No, we came to kill. Also, I'm not what culture, so I'm definitely down G.O.D., so you can hang out with me anytime, bro. Good times. That's right. Too sweet, baby. So, we after this, we got the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship, the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi. With the world's most glorious hair. <laughs> man, don't even talk the, about it. The hair. day he goes bald, oh, man. I'm, I'm follically challenged as well. <laughs> uh, that's why I got this hat on right now. Um, and they, he Yo, fought. Where, man, bald is beautiful. That's right. He fought Zack Sabre Jr., and he was accompanied to the ring by Taka Michinuku. And Zack Sabre Jr. is the British heavyweight champion, for those who don't know. Good wrestling in this match. I'm not even going to try to break it down to you guys. This was just techni technical wrestling at its finest. <laughs> Zack Sabre Jr. is like a Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson. I, he kind of reminds me of like a young Regal or Norman Smiley. <laughs> yeah, it's like a good mixture of all these guys together. This dude can straight up wrestle. Um, Tanahashi, he's the man of New Japan. They love him. Air guitar, whatever he he's got to do. 
dude, uh, the match ends in an unbelievable submission hold. It was like that crucifix arm uh, arm bar type. Mm-hmm. Dude, all I know is when he tried to reach for the ropes, he grabbed his fingers and started pulling them back Pete Dunn style. And then he wrenched on his arm. Oh, my God, dude. I was like, there's no way you can even move from this. You're tapping out. And he actually gave up. And this was I think this was a seal of approval seal of approval kind of like a passing of the torch like uh this is our guy uh for Zack Sabre Jr coming from probably the greatest of all time in New Japan damn right done you just in the grids I like it <laughs> yeah. I like it I gave it a B I thought it was a really good match yeah, thoughts on Tanahashi tapping or giving up he was couldn't really tap out what do you think you think he's going to he's starting to wind down is Tanahashi getting ready to step away? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say step away. I would, I would say, I don't know. You think? <laughs> I, I think he's taking a back seat a little bit to the younger talent now. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, for what sure, else does he have to do? Sure. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Well, he won the G one. He's won the IWGP. He's won the Intercontinental. Uh, he's won the tag titles. He's done it all. He has nothing. Nothing left to prove. Folks, we're about to get into the final three matches. If you guys are just joining me, leave a like on the video. Helps more people see it. Let's promote Ring of Honor and New Japan. I want to see them at Madison Square Garden again. I thought they had a hell of a show. And let's talk about the IWGP Intercontinental title. And Robert, one more time, show me that you get that sweet merch, baby. Robert designed this, by the way, 100%. You get that EPFNW, you get that on tpublic.com slash loser slash EPW. That's right. In the description below, guys, check out the merch. We've got two designs up and plenty more to come, I promise. Man, we got some stuff cooking. <laughs> so, next we have uh, Naito versus Ibushi. I don't have to say their first names because these dudes are great. <sighs> Man, dude. What, what, what do we say about this match here? It was a great match. I thought it was really good. Um, let's talk about it. So, Naito definitely got hit with a hurricanrana off the apron to the floor. First, like, whoa, what the hell was that? Yeah, these boys, they just don't care about their necks, man. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Dude, what neck practices do you think they do to, like, uh, get that over? I mean, they are in Japan. <laughs> excellent dude just excellent stuff shout out to dp2 thank you for saying that that's an epic shirt um go get you one <laughs> yes definitely if you got some time man check it out i don't want anything for free get yourself something if you're gonna get some money to the cause of epw uh let's talk about that first destino dude i thought it was over when he hit that abushi gets caught with the destino one, two, kick out. It dude. shocked me too, cause the way he had the pin, we hooked the legs. He rolled all the way back too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, yo, that that's there, that's GG right there. <laughs> there's no way you could kick out of that, dude. Unbelievable. Can I create a shirt? Yes, you have uh, several oh, options. My man Nelson over here is a fantastic artist. If you ever need something, Nelson, how fantastic. N- Nelson, how at your boy? Well, uh, we got some things we want to review with you. PR with- Nightmare eighty six. Get with I believe, Rob. I believe he's on Instagram at that as well. Okay. Check his stuff out. All right. Yeah, check me out at EPW Show on Instagram as well. We'll, we'll talk business on there. But we end up seeing a last ride afterwards. You think it's done? One, two, three. No. Naito kicks out of the last ride. He was at fighting out of that. Very last second. These were some Kurt Angle kickouts, you Man. called it. <laughs> <laughs> but then it all ends with... I, I said it was a knee to the face. What what did uh, they call it? The Kitamura or something like that. Dude, shades of Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, he hit he hit two uh, Kinshasa's. Yes, dude, he basically Kinshasa this dude. Like he kneed him to the face. Kota Ibushi goes for the pinfall. One, two, three. Donnie, instant reaction to that pinfall. What would you say as soon as you saw it? Joy. <laughs> Joy <laughs> and pain, <laughs> dude. That knee to the face was epic. I give it a grade of an A. That was a really, really effing good match. I thought really that good match. They now I picked Naito to win this match, but I'm kind of glad he did lose because he can move on to. Uh... Ibushi deserves to be the Intercontinental Champion. He has signed and committed himself to New Japan. Ibushi's gonna be. I think he'll be Okada in a few years. Ibushi's that guy, dude. I'm if, he, if he can I, stay healthy. I really like him, yeah. He's good, dude. Yeah. Getting dropped in your head ten times in a night, man. And I know you had a theory about Kenny Omega with all of this, too. Kind of like... See, 
I gotta say that when we did the preview for this show, I called this a consolation match for both of these guys because they're both better than this. Not no disrespect to the Intercontinental Championship, but I because there was a rumor that uh, this MSG show was supposed to be headlined by Kenny Omega and um, Cody Ibushi. Should have been great. The story was there with the Golden Lovers thing, them finally reuniting. Uh, I feel I don't know. It just didn't happen with AEW coming yeah. together and stuff. Just didn't work out. And even with you too, you said you were shocked that um, Cody Ibushi didn't sign with AEW. Yeah, I feel like he might. I don't know if he's actually like upset with Kenny for not staying or. I I don't know. I don't want to cause any rift between them or dissension if they ever see this video, but. I think that Kenny Omega is someone who went his way and Kota went his way for right now. Yeah. And it's two separate paths. And I think they're going to meet up again eventually. Oh, if yeah. those two sides can finally work together one day, I think we're going to see great things from both sides. Great of an A for that match. We're into the two main event matches right now, guys. <laughs> Let's talk about this ROH three-way ladder match for and the belt. Before we get into this match, I want to say we're sitting right now with the one man who was rooting for Matt Taven. <laughs> <laughs> What is your problem, Donnie? <laughs> <laughs> so, during this match on commentary, Nick Aldis, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, joined oh, us. Oh, Cam's in the chat. Oh, KC Classic 7. What up, KC Classic? Uh, I just want you to know that Dalton Castle turned on the boys. I know you're going to be heartbroken by that. It's all right, man. <laughs> yes, it, it'll be okay. We're here for you. <laughs> so, anywho, let's get into this, boys. Nick Aldis, uh, he's the NWA champion. He's on commentary. He has a match coming up at the Crockett Cup with Marty Skrull. Make sure you guys check that out. I'm going to see if I can find a way to watch that, hopefully. Um, but we got Jay Lethal, the champion. Matt Taven from their crazy match at the ROH 17th anniversary show. Check the archives if you guys want to see the review on that. It's probably a couple videos back at this point. And Marty Skrull, the villain, is in this one. Uh, trying to gain the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. Dude, crazy match. Matt Taven, powerbomb by Taven on the ladders under the two chairs on the outside on Lethal. Lethal looked like he died on that spot because he was laid out for quite some time. Uh, really good stuff from this ladder match. Lots of psychology in it with the knees being hurt, fingers broken. We get a bunch of stuff. I feel like this was the match where ROH kind of got, got on track with the rest of the show. Because uh, they were, I don't know what was going on ROH. They were being uh, outshined by New Japan this whole night. Yeah, dude. Th I mean, we'll get into that at the very end real quick. I guess we'll talk about the whole yeah. ROH New Japan thing. But we saw some great stuff here. Uh, superplex from off the top of the ladder. Oh, God. Hey, fans hate Matt Taven. Donnie. Except for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there were definitely chance of fuck you, Taven. Yeah. Um, uh, when he got his finger snapped by Marty's girl, they got you got you deserve it chance. <laughs> Matt Taven is hated, and if you listen to our preview, we definitely sound like we hated him too. And I don't. Yeah, hey Zeus, repost your question, please. We're gonna answer it in here. Um, go ahead. I don't. Okay, back to the heel heat that uh, Matt Taven was getting. I don't think he was getting that for being an excellent heel. People generally just don't like the guy. <laughs> I, I think it's the bad heat. It's the X Pac boss man heat. You don't <laughs> want that heat. Oh, Matt Taven is a great fucking D heel. DP says he's a great heel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, sign guy, Dudley? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yes. Listen, I, here's the it's Matt Taven's in a weird spot. Like, I don't hate Matt Taven, but I don't like Matt Taven. It's so hard to explain. Like, it's kind of cringy, too. It's go away heat. Okay. And then let that uh, 17th anniversary show. It made me appreciate his abilities. Yeah, same. But he's just, this whole kingdom thing. I like TK Ryan. That's about it with this whole kingdom thing. And, and you know what? At one point, I liked the kingdom when he was the wingman in it. He's just not, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. So we Maybe get, he'll prove us wrong. Yeah, maybe he will. Maybe maybe we're wrong in this, and one day I'm going to have to eat crow and say he was good. And I'll be the first one to be on here and say, I was wrong. I should have said this about the guy. So... Let's get back into it. So afterwards, we see Matt Taven. They do. They did the ladder with the X. I forgot this spot. And they do their whole spot. Taven gets suplexed on the ladders with the X. They go to throw the ladders to the outside. Lethal dumps the ladders out. It busts a fan in the face. Literally. Like, the referee had to run over. That's a lawsuit. <laughs> Terrible. 
terrible stuff, dude. So hopefully that fan's okay. If you were the person who got busted in the face with the ladder and you see this, my condolences to your face. Like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Uh, I wouldn't have sued. I would have definitely asked for, like, all your replica belts, whatever I could get, free merch and free, free tickets. It. I want free all access. Yeah, exactly. I want to work for the company, too. <laughs> like, I want some shares in uh, <laughs> Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So afterwards... We see this great spear spot through a table on the outside, a la Edge, WrestleMania 22. I've been doing a lot of WrestleMania comparisons lately in these hey, matches. It's t- WrestleMania t- t- the season. Hell yeah. So, spear through the table. After he does this amazing feat, the fans chant, you still suck. You still <laughs> suck. It's just like, damn, dude. Uh, somebody said that Matt Taven is similar to 2010 Miz. I could see that. I Yeah. I can- yeah, he's not appreciated right now. Maybe later he will be. Seven has has more edge, though. Mm-hmm. So, afterwards, fans chant, you still suck. Lethal hits an elbow from the top of the ladder through a table on the outside. Nice. King T. Rawls. We will get to that, but I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yes. Um, hold on. We're getting to this stuff, boys. I'm highlighting Jesus' comments so we don't forget to go back to that. After that, he drops the elbow through the table exploded. It looked like it sucked for Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal looked like he was in pain after that. Um, after that, we get to the top of the ladder. The ladder set up, ladders on both sides. They knock out um, my boy, uh, Marty Scroll after he broke, what's his name's fingers, Matt basically. Taven. Matt Taven's fingers. Then Matt Taven and Jay Lethal are up there battling it out for the title. Lethal goes off. And all you hear is, oh, shit, from me, come out my mouth, <laughs> because I know what's about to happen. J. F. and Lethal, Derek says. Well, not tonight, D, because Jay Lethal went off that ladder, and Matt Taven pulls down the title. Matt Taven is the new Ring of Honor champion. You get over here, <laughs> because Matt Taven winning was just like, what the hell? You know what, dude? Congratulations. Prove us wrong. Step it up with ROH, man. The way I want to see it. The way he pulled that belt down to was like a big fuck you to all my haters. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if he can run with that. Yeah, that was probably to us. All right. Um, Grade B for that match, by the way. Let's get to these questions in here real quick. Jesus De Leon wants to know, what's next for him? Do you guys think he will leave ROH and join AEW, or is he going somewhere else? And that's for uh, Marty. Marty, we... I think it's a foregone conclusion that eventually he'll end up in AEW. <laughs> Marty was in the Being the Elite video this week, and they basically had his voice on there, and he never showed up on it. And they never confirmed it was him. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Guys, I think I hear Marty. It sounds like he's underneath the table. <laughs> like, come on, dude. You know it's him. What do you think, Donnie? Come on. Uh, about where Marty's going? Yeah. Oh, Marty definitely going to go to AEW. Without a question, Without no a doubt. Question, is there, no a, if you're Ring of Honor, is there anything you could do to make this guy stay? Absolutely not. He no, wants, he wants to be with his boys. He, you know, he wants the money, and I'm sure there's an executive vice president position waiting for him as well. Yeah. King T. Raw, it says Marty's the WWE. His girlfriend is there. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. And his girl doesn't like when people bring that up, too. I just saw that. I didn't know they were dating until she put that up. Yeah, I hate that in general, man. Girls wrestling, you get a champ or a boyfriend. Yeah, that's just wrong. She... <laughs> whoop, whoop. Sorry. <laughs> All right, hold on. We got Smalley Biggs here says, skip the show. Watch the highlights. Too disappointed. We're not going to say what, they, what you're disappointed about. If Bushi beating Naito is erg, plus ROH New Japan had to get Bigot Cassidy and Consensual Enzo. But Jesus <laughs> Christ, Consensual Enzo. <laughs> oh, shout out to my man, Smalley Big S. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I like it, brother. I like it. Uh, we got Jay Lethal, RIP Jay Lethal, Marty's Girl. I enjoyed this show. Lots of fun, but almost seven hours long. Trust me. Connor, you're going to have real fun oh, tomorrow. Man. Yeah. <laughs> His contract ended soon, and the fact that he didn't win makes me believe he is leaving and joining to go AD. They probably don't want to invest in a guy who's probably leaving, guys. Yeah. Um, Main event time. Not a lot to say about this match. It was... Oh, happy days. <laughs> for the IWGP... Oh, happy days. <laughs> for the IWGP <laughs> heavyweight title, we have Okada versus the Switchblade, Jay White with Ghetto. Red Shoes is the referee. Thank God Red Shoes made an appearance on this because I needed to see my man Red Shoes out there. Red Shoes was very ineffective. <laughs> we'll get into that. The fans are 100% behind Okada in this. This was classic. Jesus De Leon's probably yelling, Rainmaker! I'm right there with you. <laughs> so we get into this match. I really don't have a lot to say about anything. We saw Muda Locks. We saw great transitional wrestling. 
it is what it is at this point. A lot of deadlift Germans, too. Yeah. They were laying it right in the back of their heads, man. Yeah, that's that neck stuff, man. I don't know how they train for that. Something, my, something with that dojo, man. I need to see a chiropractor. That's all I know. And I don't even wrestle. <laughs> so, in this match, we saw a Rainmaker hit. And I think it's the first time I've ever seen someone kick out of the Rainmaker. The Switchblade kicked out, dude. Can't believe they gave that distinction to him. Yeah. It, <laughs> Robert's a, a Jay White hater, by the way, if you didn't know. And loather. <laughs> loather. <laughs> so... Ghetto got kicked out of this match by Red Shoes at one point, and he never left. <laughs> like, he stayed by ringside <laughs> by the apron. I mean, Ghetto is the boss, so... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He's like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Kiss my ass. Um, with his stupid Sanford and Son hat. Ian and Kevin Kelly are great commentary. What y'all think about them? Ian is a freaking dork. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. You know what? Ian's good as the straight man, and I love Kevin Kelly in this. Damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> That's all he kept yelling. Uh, I always like Jay Lethal, but he's not doing a Ric Flair Macho Man impersonation no more, right? No. Jay Lethal is his own man at and this he's point. He's still dropping elbows. He still drops the elbows and the dedication stuff that he used to do, but Jay Lethal's his own man at Tap this point. Tap him on the shoulder and see what happens. <laughs> he's kind of like playing the franchise of Ring of Honor role at this point yeah so afterwards guys we see some transitions into the okada let's get to the finish rob they basically transition into he's going for the rainmaker we see backslides out of it he ends up hitting three rainmakers oh, no, we, we forgot to spin around tombstone <laughs> oh yeah 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 but he, he attempted three rainmakers and then he gets caught into a tombstone he gets a twisting tombstone pile driver onto his bean and he's knocked loopy. Everybody knows what time it is. Once he hooks that wrist, he picks him up. Rainmaker to Jay White's punk ass. <laughs> Count it. One, two, three. The Switchblade is no longer the IWGP heavyweight and champion. And I couldn't be happier. Connor wants to know what I have against Jay White. What don't I have against Jay White? <laughs> I... This does not reflect <laughs> everything pro wrestling, by the way, guys. If you're a Jay White fan, you can still click subscribe. I respect Jay White. I just hate him. <laughs> He's just doing his heel work. He, he doesn't like the guy. That's it. But after those Rainmakers, we saw them do the camera work for Okada. The people were hyped for it. This was a long-ass show. Longer than I thought it was going to go, to be honest. Yeah. Because I read something online that said... Um Security for the Madison Square Garden, the whoever they contracted to said they were only contracted for five hours. So I would say if the show started at six thirty, they got people in around like five thirty. Show should have been well, ten Close. thirty, yeah. Yeah, they probably got some they OT went out over. of it. Yeah. That's all good. But in the end, I give this match a grade of an A. What did you guys think? What say you in my Conrad Thompson voice? I agree with that. I I give it an A. I'm giving it an A plus because I got the outcome that I wanted, even though it's not the outcome I predicted. <laughs> Peace, bro. <laughs> so now here's the thing that we didn't get to talk about, guys. The overall show, real quick. Hold on. Does Okada have the best drop kick in the business? <sighs> what do you think, Donnie? <laughs> yeah, come on, Donnie. Stand. Okay, make it easier. Standing drop kick. Standing drop kick. Then yeah, Okada. Okay. That's tough, man. It, it's between Randy Orton. AJ Styles and Okada, I think, for best drop kick. Randy right, Orton's just Dolph smooth. Ziggler, so is AJ. Dolph Ziggler can get them. <laughs> he hates Dolph Ziggler too, guys. By the way, um, and it's, it's Dolph Ziggler's fault. Overall show thoughts, though, guys. Like I, I didn't give a grade yet for this, and I want to kind of come to a collective agreement. <laughs> Derek, hardcore Holly, best damn drop kick in the business. <laughs> Told you, I kept saying that, right? <laughs> best damn drop kick in the business, Bob Holly, but. Let's get into it, guys. Overall grade for this show. What do you think? Did Ring of Honor and New Japan deliver? I mean, Ring of Honor's portion of this, I'm not going to lie. You guys suck. Like, you guys got to step it up. Oh, I don't know geez. if Delirious has to go, but they're, they're not. They were <laughs> overshadowed by New Japan, period. Yeah, yeah. I get that you're In working In every together. aspect of the show, they were overshadowed. Yeah, so I don't, you guys can't work together all the time. Ring of Honor needs to do better. King says 7 out of 10 show. What do you guys think of that? Uh I would say closer to an eight because New yeah. Japan just they just they carried the load. There are three A matches that I mentioned in here, in that range, uh, several Bs. What what do you say overall show grade? Overall, what would you give this show? I would give this show an eight. An eight? 
Well, A A B C D. What what do you? Um, do? I, I do letter grades. Okay. Um, Subscribe to the channel, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus like, says I, 9 out of 10. DP says 8.5 out of 10. We're seeing some I'm, mix. I'm going between B, B plus, just because of how historic this event is and how significant it is to the business. That's mine. So what do you got? What I do you give it a B. You're going B? That's between B, B plus. I'm going you know, B plus. I'm B plus. I'm B, plus. B plus. B plus final B rating? Plus. Can we all agree on that? Yeah. All right, B plus <laughs> final rating. Shout out to the live chat. Guys, we're getting ready to get out of here. Before I leave, I will update all the stuff that's in here. Our wage was the worst of the show. Yes, sir. I agree. Yeah, they, they got some work to do, man. They, they they got some free agents possibly coming up soon. Maybe Ring of Honor. They they did sign Bandino and Roosh. They they beat WWE to get them. So maybe there's a way to do it. Andrade with the assist. <laughs> Shout out to Andrade Cien Almas. Now just known as Andrade. But he'll be Dre soon. <laughs> Just Dre. <laughs> he says six out of ten. I'm being generous. Disappointed personally. Different opinion. I know. Different opinions are okay, hey. bro. I'm not mad at it. I don't. I'm not someone who says you have to agree with me every time. I agree. Um, ROH is struggling without the elite. Can, can you say the same for New Japan though? I mean, I feel like they rebounded better than uh, ROH did, but oh, too sweet hey. for that, bro. <laughs> too sweet for that. That was good. But guys. Let me just end this video real quick. We're almost approaching an hour, and I don't, I didn't want this to go this long. But tomorrow, WrestleMania weekend, I'm going to be at this guy's house. We're going to watch WrestleMania. Big group, big oh. party, everything <laughs> pro wrestling, little mini party. We do this every year like this. I just want to know what do you guys want to see. I'm going to try to get in some videos with some people. I'm going to have my live review. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel to check it out. I appreciate everybody who's in this live chat. We're going to give some shout outs to everybody. And shout out to Donnie for actually getting on the camera. He was quiet so far in the beginning. Yeah, I it's all good, sweet. man. Just <laughs> sweet too. But, guys, make sure you join us for WrestleMania. I want to hear your thoughts on this long-ass show, too, tomorrow. Because this is going to be even worse. It starts at 5 o'clock Eastern man, Standard we, Time. We in, we in for a... Oh, boy. Yes, well, I'm going to be doing stuff during the time when these videos start. But let me give some shout-outs to Connor, Jesus De Leon, DP, thank you, Goober316, PR Nightmare86, my man King1993, thank you so much for joining, guys. Uh, Derek Shelton was up in here. We had, uh, what was my other guy's name that joined Smalley us? Biggs or? Smalley Biggs. You I guys, like that guy. <laughs> yeah, I like him too. Come back, man. KC Classic 7. Cam is going to be devastated when he hears what happened to the boys. It's, all, it's okay, Cam. <laughs> That's a, a live event joke if you guys didn't see one of my Ring of Honor reviews. But he'll be devastated by this. I'll be at work. Like, <laughs> get your own shoes from watching WrestleMania. That's all right, hey, man. Hey, how, how would Tom feel about that, Nelson? Screw Tom. <laughs> hey. I'm just kidding. Tom, you're probably a nice guy. But... <laughs> Make sure you guys check out the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you who checked this out. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Rob, Donnie, if you guys got anything you want to say to the people? Um, I got real quick. RIP Nipsey Hustle, And buy the merch. Buy the merch. Buy the merch. Show it off. Quality. Donnie. Quality. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, this was awesome. Uh, looking forward to uh, more oh. future shows. <laughs> and uh, too soon. Too sweet. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will be back with another review tomorrow. It's been WrestleMania weekend. Make sure you guys stay safe, take care, and enjoy some damn wrestling this weekend because we're all wrestling fans together. Get you some good food. Peace. Shout out to the new subscriber, King. I appreciate you, brother. Definitely buying that shirt. You could customize it to whatever color you want. I did the Buffalo Bills colors. That's right. Shout out to the Buffalo Bills. Hometown, baby. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, Eva Marie. I, okay. <laughs> I like that you don't want to say that, but guess what we're about to do to you? I like to put you in timeout because you're like a child. Peace. Nighthawk, make sure you guys like the video and check it out. And let's end it with a little EPW chant for the boys. EPW, EPW, EPW. Peace. Hey.